Here we are with another Friday Night Live Zoom, October 8th, 2021. So I think we're hooked up. <laughs> We've been having some challenges here. And I think it's working now. So voila. After 13 minutes of trying, <laughs> I have a new challenge. I reinstall the whole operating system, the new operating system, Kubuntu. I used to use Ubuntu. And everything's working beautiful, but uh, this uh, connection with Zoom only works with Brave. And for some reason, I was unable to make my Brave a default browser. So that was the challenge. And uh, I'll have to figure that one out when I have more time. <laughs> But uh, anyway, I hope everybody's living and loving it, uh, feeling freaking amazing. It's uh, beautiful times ahead. Lots of challenges, but beautiful, beautiful times. So let's stay very, very focused now because we want to, um, uh, what has to say, what's the saying go again? Your energy goes where your Focus is or something. Now, what's the saying again? I can't remember. <laughs> where your energy flows and your focus, your energy flows wherever your focus goes or something. Um, let's stay focused. Um, good place to stay focused is our divine creator. Because without that, we're doomed. We wouldn't be here. And uh, that's one thing that uh, is continuously uh, where your focus goes, your energy flows. That's it, Christina. Yeah, you wrote down here. So uh, you're able to hear us. That's good. Um, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm able to see and hear you guys. <laughs> got to sort it out finally. <laughs> I'm have yeah. To fix the default for the Brave browser because th this uh, the live stream through Zoom does not work on Firefox for some reason. Yeah. Well, it's always when you reinstall your system, it's a lot of work. I also have to do that on my computer and I'm just like, it's even not turning on sometimes, but I'm postponing and postponing and postponing because it breaks everything. Whatever you had, mm -hmm. it just breaks everything. Yeah, I I've been postponing for a while. I wanted to do it months ago, and I said, I just, I got to do it. So instead of uh, risking losing everything, I just bought another hard drive and just put everything on a new hard drive. And I still have the old one if I need anything. But um, yeah, it's work. It takes many, many hours. It took me a couple of days to set it all up. Um, I don't use any uh, corporate uh, operating system. I use, I use Linux for many, many years. Um, I'm not bowing down to these corporations. <laughs> it's free, and uh, you just, it's just a learning curve to learn how to use it. You can do it. everything that uh, the other ones can do, uh, Windows, Apple, and, and better. Yeah, my partner is a software engineer, so he's like kind of proficient in all of those. Yeah, so, oh, awesome. so my, my computer is due as well for like... Uh, <laughs> Like we are on the master fast, right? It's almost it's when like, you start what, open. What do people do with their health? We put it off. We put it off. We put it off until <clears throat> I need help. I can't move. <laughs> yeah. And then you have to reinstall everything, like literally wipe it out. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and then many things break, you know, doesn't work. And you have to recreate new connections, new accounts, everything, right? Delete, purge reinstall that's what we're doing with the physicality or mental and emotional state no different than what we're doing with the operating system of a computer it's a perfect similar analogy yeah yeah well actually i i just uh like an hour ago broke my three-day dry fast so to speak my first three day three day dry fast awesome so it was just um kind of a semi dry and dry i tried as best as i could you know but yeah, um, that's how you do it you just little by little yeah work it up and voila one day you'll be doing 9 10 11 12 days and 
it's not that it's easy, but you'll be able to do it and you'll have the confidence that, that, that you, you let go of the fear. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very interesting things were happening. I actually sat down and I was like, why am I doing this? Like, what's the point of it? You know, like where I'm heading, well, where, what a kind of territories I'm entering, you know? You don't have your answers. You're going to have to find yeah. them for yourself. But what I can say and what many of us who have gone down the path is it only gets better and better and better as we move down that path. That's, you know, it's, um, there's nothing that comes close to being in a fasting state and uh, it'll, it'll only strengthen everything you do in your life. You focus on your divine, your creator and everything else when you're in a fasting state because it gives you clarity. It gives you purpose. It uh, gives you so many different things. It's, it's a beautiful place to be. That's why we say it's a spiritual first and foremost journey, but you need to have, the, of course, the intent and emotion to go down that path. If you're going down the path of fasting, oh, I need to fix my cancer or arthritis or... Yeah, you're gonna do that for a while and then what? Well, but that's part of a journey, I think. It's still, you know, physical and material, like physical well, and spiritual, it's, it's all connected. Together. Yeah, it's all bound yeah. together. But what I'm saying is most people, um, and I was down that path, were looking to fix something through fasting. And the fasting, if we turn it around and say, I'm going down this path because I'm, I'm, I'm going down a spiritual journey with my divine creator. If you, go, if you do it for that purpose, Forget about the physicality. That's simple. It's going to fix itself. You don't have to think about it. It's all done on autopilot. That's what I'm trying to say. If, if we're going down the path of the physicality, we're, we're going to spiral out to more confusion is what I'm trying to say. And yeah, and, and I get it. I get it what you mean. It's, it's still everything. I think in every single action of your life, you can find only materiality or only spirituality. You know, but I guess it's a balance of both of those yeah. two, both, you know, exactly. and what is creator? You are it. You are the creator. You are, you know, you're not disconnected. You are that. Everything is that, right? We're part God, of the creator. God is everything. We are not everything. <laughs> There's a difference. But well, you are part of God. We are, are it. We are everything, but we are not everything. So there's a difference. I, from my understanding, we are everything. We are oceans. We are stars. Yeah, we are. Understanding. That's many people's understanding in the Western society, I would say, but uh, that's not at all what I think. I think, in my opinion, I think, I believe that God is uh, everything and we're not. And mm. we will never be. We're part of it. We will never be everything. And that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. It's just not us. Yeah, we're not God. Everybody has their different views on, on everything. Yeah, thing. yeah. I, I feel that I've been joining your last call, and I was like, "Wow, there's so much about like religion and like." I was like feeling, "Am I joining a detox call, master fast, or like some, you know, kind of?" Well, to me, fasting about re religion, you know, and, you know, I think there are so many, re it's just kind of my perception. I think there are so many religions in the world They're and everybody, everybody is free to believe what they want. And I think freedom is so. There's only one religion, one God. There's yeah, exactly. And sometimes not believing in God is a part of a journey where you kind of need to see the other side that. You know, I just only believe in material world that I can awaken to the spirit world. Yeah, nobody can be forced into religion or worship. Yeah. Nobody can be forced. That's yeah. a given. In every religion, you cannot force uh, faith on anyone. You cannot. Yeah. Force it. It's, uh, you cannot tell people you have to have faith. I mean, you cannot. You know, it's impossible to um, ask them to practice faith. They have to do it from themselves um and uh fasting i find if it's not uh, uh part of your faith it is material it's that simple in my opinion if it's not part of your faith it's done for yourself and um uh following your ego and yourself you know 
um, yeah. which is not big enough. We are, we are here to serve, not to be served. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so faith uh, to me is uh, way more important than Master Fast. Master Fast is a lifestyle. It's a beautiful lifestyle that can help you live a more natural way, which is a godly way, which helps you um, strengthen your faith. And um, it's a lifestyle. You can use it for the rest of your life, you know. Yeah. What a, yeah. What I, when I, what I feel, you know, in a way, like how my journey started, it was all about like physical, really wanting to really physical mm -hmm. everything fixed physically. And, and I think that was an essential part of a journey really as well, coming into spiritual and where I see, you know, like even like, I think a Jesus said or something in a Bible, I don't follow any particular religion. I believe in you know, we are creators, we are it, we are everything. And, but most probably my closest one is Zen Buddhism, which I kind of follow practices of meditation, but Jesus said being in this world, but not of this world. So really like, oh, you know, I'll play this game of life, this material, whatever, but knowing that I'm connected to spirit, that the place where I came from. Yeah. Like watch yourself, you know, don't get, don't think that this is it, you know, this yeah. is is much more beyond the material mm. world you know but part of me was really really getting into material and then one day through the big crisis awakening to oh maybe that's not it you know it's like some people get houses cars millions of dollars and they sit in their like 10 story mansion and they're like i'm so empty inside you know it's like oh is there is meaning and then they jump out of their balcony you know so. why? because <laughs> why why we have to ask ourselves why does that happen to so many because the void there is that void inside they try to fill it fill it fill it nothing fills it and then you know they don't understand that void is just the, your true essence, actually. Because they're going outwards to try and fill it. It's impossible. Yeah. To go inwards. Yeah, yeah. You have and to we, go to the creator. We, we fill it by emptying out. Heart. <laughs> yeah. Getting rid of all. But you know, when you also when you say going inwards, also, you know, like um, yeah, just just make sure that it's not all about you. You know, it's it's about the creator, you know, it's not just about me going inwards it's more it's about connecting to the creator right but i i feel that i am it that every cell of my being is a creator is it many times there are many people in the western society who think this way and i used to be one of them and i used to listen to so many people who talk about this kind of spirituality not anymore i don't believe that and i i actually i feel it's uh it, it, it only it, it only um, spirals us outwards. It is not, doesn't give, <coughs> it doesn't strengthen the faith in any way, shape or form, but it, it strengthens the ego instead, I feel. It makes you think that you're powerful uh, in a way that like you can create. No, it, no, no, no. It, you know, like you can, you can be the creator of your own reality. I, I believe this is not how it, it is. I believe uh, we must be humble to the creator, which is way above us. We have the capability of creating certain things and so on and so forth we have the um, in, in this realm mm -hmm. but um you know if you were, if we were gods then we should be able to create something that simple like Heaven. a blade of, a blade of grass oh, we should be able to out, be of, a, out of nothingness create right? <laughs> Why don't you or, be, or a dog or a cat and this that's what that's what a creator can do or, or yeah but the essence of the creator is within you what i mean yeah. it is in every cell of your body in yeah. everything yeah. From the creator we can't yeah. yeah, but no um yeah and i think for me fasting is like where you really reconnect back to it exactly through that to really feel that light that divine essence coming through it but if the essence of me is the creator then everything around me everything is part of a creator right I mean, we all can have different perceptions. And I think if we argue about religion, that's going to go nowhere, really. It's not, you see, I, like this, this is the thing. When the Western people say the word religion, it's like they have phobia against it. There is only one religion. There is only one religion. Let's not fight about it. There is only one God, one religion. And that's it. 
all the Abrahamic religions, all the prophets, they taught the same thing. Muhammad didn't come with anything new. Jesus didn't come with anything new. Moses didn't come. It was from Adam. All the 30,000 religions are praying to the same God. It's, no, I don't, unless, I don't know about unless, all the religions. Unless they're, 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 they're satanic. Yeah, yeah, you don't know about all the religions, you know, because you don't know them. It's so 30,000 plus. Don't, don't talk about everything. I'm talking about the Abrahamic <laughs> religions. And I'm sorry, but all this. There's, and complete respect to other religions that I don't know. I don't know. That came before. I don't know. Okay, so maybe they told the same thing or similar. <clears throat> Because we don't know everything. I don't know everything. So it's fine. I'm not, I'm not disrespecting any other uh, religion other than, other than the Abrahamic, but I'm saying, I'm sorry, but you know, like they all, the Abrahamic religions, whoever is fighting, this is, uh, uh, this is the uh, satanic force, uh, the whatever Zionism to me, in my eyes today, it's the Zionism that is trying to separate the people of religion. Okay? They're telling you, oh, you know, uh, uh, the Jews and the Muslims and the Christians hate each other. And uh, please get the hell out of here. We all worship one Lord. Our prophets came and they taught the same thing. Okay. They came and they taught the same thing. And we are people of faith. And if you want to come and separate us, then you're not a man or a woman of faith. Then get out of here. Simple as that. If you want to come and separate us, or, um, or this saying that the religions are the cause of war, I am sorry, you are so brainwashed. It is beyond, I cannot help you. You know, if you have a understanding or belief that religions are the cause of war, and this is what I see here in this Western society that does not practice any religion. Very few people are a small percentage that practices. And that's what happens. They think they are the smartest, and I'm sorry, probably some of the most brainwashed people. Yeah. Well, I feel a lot of a bit of anger, not a lot, but a bit of anger yeah. in, in the way you express it yourself. It is very important because you know what? When there is, when we see wrong, it's important to speak about it. But it's, it's all perception. Divide and conquer. Yeah, you can see, you know what? Okay. If it's all perception, then you're saying there's no right and wrong. Please, this is wrong. You cannot say. No, I say there is right and wrong, but maybe in my or, you know, my opinion, right and wrong is could be this, in your opinion is this, in Gino's opinion is that, you know. And we all agree about it. Okay, the truth is the truth. We all agree about it. We don't need to be smart to know the truth. We know the truth in our hearts. So let's not play games on perception and this and that. This is all, uh, I don't know, people are trying to make peace like that. How can you make peace like that? If you see a murderer, that is okay? Like No, uh, of course it's not know? okay. Well, then there is right and wrong. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes not believing in anything is part of a journey of awakening to believing in something. Sometimes choosing one religion or another religion you know, it's just a choice of freedom. And I mean, we are in our society where currently the freedom is being stripped off. And I think that, Why is that actually enforcing for people have freedom to do what they really want. It's, you know, a natural Why? way of being. Why are people being uh, stripped out of their freedom? Because maybe they need this in their journey. Yeah. Maybe, maybe as a humanity, we need this in our journey yeah, to be stripped we off. Remember, we have given up our freedom a long time ago. We have given it up because we're not people of faith anymore. We're not practicing. We're too weak. Where anybody tells us this or tells us that, and we believe it. But I don't think that saying we is a good word because there's a lot of people who practice and there's a lot of people who yeah, don't that's practice. That's why I'm saying is what I mean, the majority. So majority, I'm sorry, in the Western society, do not practice. Yeah, yeah but again, I think I don't know. It's again this call like religion, religion. I know people hate it. It's okay. You, they can hate it all they want. I will speak about my faith, and I love it because it is the most important thing in in my life. It is more important than anything else I'm doing. I practiced it when I was young. I stopped, and I started, You know, I got into the ego thing. And then I started practicing again while I started fasting, you know. Fasting is, is a great tool. Is it that only tool to be faithful? No. However, fasting is in every faith, okay, for a reason. 
it does help you strengthen your faith. It's about sacrifice and sacrifice strengthens your faith. All kinds of sacrifices, right? In the, in the name of God. Mm. If you just do fasting for your own thing, you know, for your own whatever, then it is not really as deep. But when you do it in a form of faith, it is very deep, very deep. Um, so that fasting mm. is uh, fantastic, but um, there is also prayer is, is huge. There are good deeds, you know, helping the poor or helping people in need or, or helping anyone, you know, your, your neighbor. There are so many acts of deeds that are also counting towards strengthening our faith. Uh, uh, fasting is uh, great. Prayer is great. I mean, it takes discipline. These are all discipline. Um, yeah, but for me, I, I, I feel like that suffering is necessary until you understand that it is not necessary in what I believe in the creator and I meditate and I connect to it and I don't follow any particular religion. You don't have to. You don't. I know that it's within me and it's through my rituals. I connect to Jesus wow. and to Muhammad and to Buddha and I have pictures of everyone and I do rituals and I, when I want to, I do it. When I don't want, I don't, but I know it's within me. I feel it pulsating in every cell of my body That's good. and that connection is there. And you know, I, I, this is what I think, you know, arguing about it or like, I don't know, I, I don't like it personally I, because everybody about, is different. Am I arguing about uh, any religion? I am not arguing about one religion, but I, I was- No, I'm not, I'm not directing it personally to you, Rana. Yeah, but I say to whoever tells me that religions are anything negative, I would say, stop, stop, stop. And if you don't want to practice any religion, then you know, go ahead, don't practice. But if you want to practice, you're more than welcome to practice any religion. Also freedom. If you don't want, exactly. And if you don't want to practice, don't practice. But um, uh, if somebody tells me all the uh, religions are the cause of war, or this talk is all about religion and it may be negative. No, 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 no. It is the most positive thing that we can talk about. Spirit, like uh, faith, faith in general is the most The, the positive satanic thing. religions are the fastest growing. Yeah, whatever, what, I don't know what these are. But they say in Kali, like in Kali Yuga, the last period of uh, when the time restarts again, the evil takes over. Exactly. And the darkness takes over before the really the new dawn of light can start. So how, like, maybe everything that's happening is just necessary. It and it happen. is part of a process. It would you know? said it's no. not supposed to happen. Who said no? Everything Why has happened. It's fine, yeah, I mean, it's fine. It really yeah. nothing wrong with, uh, with it happening the way it is. This is how God planned it. Yeah, but we're just kind of, I think it's just discussing, you know, this like it's, it's not about, you know, who said what. It's just that, you know, maybe from our inner understanding, you know, that maybe part of a process. It is, it is, you know, everything is God's plan. But, uh, you know, just because it's, we know everything is God's plan, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be doing anything about it, right? Um, we still have to do our work. We still have to do our part. Um, where, where it says where your energy, uh, you know, where your focus flows, their energy goes, right? So if we focus on Satan, you know, we allow them to grow in a way. But it's not that there, you know, we, we are not aware of what's happening. I think, in my opinion, in my life, is being aware of what's really happening, but most being like, looking at it being neutral expressing what you want to express but not like ranting about it all the time because it gets energy it gets your ranting energy as well then like ne talking about negative stuff like talking about satanic stuff or whatever not negative stuff happening around us you mean no i think talking about it and acknowledging it is very very important and being it's aware of it yeah. Being aware of it and, and doing on, on your, you know, on your level, something that you can do about it. But if you go on fight it, it gets your energy. You fight it or you go with it. It gets your energy because you focus on it. Yeah, for sure. I, I believe it's important to focus on solutions, um, especially when it's quite big like that, right? Um, yeah. Because it's a little bit of, it's, it can, it's a little bit hard for many people to, uh, to swallow um many people don't even understand what's happening they're just blindly no, it's okay. following it's fine that's fine and we have compassion for everybody right yeah yeah 
uh, still, we, I mean, for us, I think it's important to focus our own energy towards the solutions because, um, yeah, it can be draining, very draining. Yeah. To, um, Extremely. To focus on the um, negative news because there are, are so many negative news right now. Yeah. Uh, and of course, but some positive, but it's pretty sad, you know. Um, and, you know, yeah. again, uh, we are responsible. You know, I take responsibility and I, I say humanity is responsible for this. Um, and the, the truth is, in my opinion, the majority of us have given away, um, uh, you know, given away our faith, you know, uh, like our faith was weak that we allowed a lot of stuff to happen in a materialistic manner, you know, um, rather than. Yeah, but like Gino says, if that would not be a part of what is, then it would not be happening. And I, I believe in my journey from my spiritual exploration that we actually come down from the, from the spiritual world here to actually expel the evil from us, to be aware of it. And I think the evil is part of us, part of all of us humanity. And we, are, we need to all collectively purge it out. Well, and it's not separate. It's not something, oh, there's evil and there's me. No, it's all one. I, no, I believe there is evil and there is humanity. But then humanity, I believe, uh, from uh, that's uh, that's in um, uh, that's in the Abrahamic um, uh, ways, you know, of thinking uh, that um, starting from Adam, basically, uh, we are easily deceived by the material world, easily uh, distracted. You can say distracted is the word I would say that I always like to use. We are distracted from our faith, the truth um, uh, with the, this material uh, world, you know, and that's okay. It's not the end of the world uh, because we still have, we have God gave us power. Um, but in my opinion, the secret is to be humble enough. To yeah, but I, I don't see a problem in the material world. You know, I think the balance is the most important, the balance between spiritual and material. And, and, and in the Abrahamic religions, it doesn't say there is anything wrong. You can still live your life and a happy life and, a, you know, abundant life. There is nothing wrong with living a material, in, in the material world, not a material life, but in the material world. Yeah, and just enjoying it. And even when you know that you are spirit in yeah, this physical the, body, Abrahamic, just for fun, for play, you know? Yeah, the Abrahamic ways, basically. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with living in the world because God put us here. So we have to make the best out of it. Um, but um, it, it is, uh, of course, you just you want to be awakened <laughs> and you want to know the truth and you want you know you want to stick to the truth and sometimes you have to make sacrifices um you know sacrifice some material stuff you have to um in order to uh, cleanse in order to cleanse yourself you know yeah i actually can kind of relate to it a bit you know in my healing journey like I let go so much of material stuff, so much of like things in my life, let go, let go, let go. And I think I have arrived at the point where I'm like, oh, if I want to have something, I just want to have it for fun. But I don't, I don't attach myself to it. I don't think it's like me or like big house. If I have a big house, that's it. My journey is no, if I have it, I just have it for fun, you know? And this all this just game that you're playing here. It's like almost like a playground. I don't know. I got a lot of realizations through my fasting journey. So I'm now sharing with you guys. <laughs> oh, wonderful stuff. Yeah. By the way, I actually joined the call because I got a no job. I decided to find a new job and I didn't have time, but I was still fasting and I kind of wanted to join and, and, you know, kind of keep the energy going and connect with you guys. Uh, because, you know, when you connect, you kind of still stay within community. And, you know, on dry fasting, I've again been experiencing like really bad back pain and like kidney pain. And it's like, but it's so bad. It almost feels like I'm being cut into half. Wonderful, isn't it? 
Oh, I don't know. I would prefer not to have it. <laughs> a lot of work for your kidneys. It just means they are blocked, in my opinion, from my experience. Your, yeah. bowel, your bowels are obstructed. Mm -hmm. are obstructed. Your kidneys are obstructed. And uh, when you have the kidney pain, it just means they are uh, doing a lot of work. You know, on the dry, it's too much work for them uh, when the body is obstructed. Yeah. Two little kidneys, size of our ears. Mm -hmm. They do enormous amounts of work those two little things and their vital organs mm -hmm. that's a, a, a big 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 problem for a vast majority of people with kidneys mm -hmm. big because, because problem the bowels are blocked. They, number one they have their own free will and number two they are very easy to get obstructed through our lifestyles and emotions absolutely Mm. it all comes from there what do you mean they have free will um yeah you know you have free will to do as you please your kidneys have that as well so if, uh, i don't know if you've seen the kidney prayer we put well, out doesn't, doesn't every organ have it's, it's uh, yeah kidneys are pretty, to... are pretty stuff everything has yeah of course every single cell yeah has its own mm -hmm. kidneys uh they like to do things uh kidneys are unique because they are an elimination organ that are like they have to like the bowels okay like you 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 go to the bathroom you go to the toilet and release a lot but the kidneys are inside and they have to filter a lot of stuff you know all the fluid they're continuously working and we're continuously bombarding them with our emotions with our physicality physical things we do so on and so forth mm -hmm. they don't ever get a break fasting dry fasting is a wonderful break for the kidneys when you're go you're a little bit down the future of a fasting lifestyle mm -hmm. when you start they're going to do tremendous amounts of work yeah. to purge out all those obstructions because the body is not uh, cooperating <laughs> it has to do a lot of work on its so own. you know I, I i've shared my story about you know ended up in bed for almost two years and so on and so forth it was all back to kidneys and I had challenges with my kidneys for many, many, many years. Even on raw foods and this and that. All the different herbs. Nothing was really solving those challenges. The biggest revelation that came was as soon as I started dry fasting. And um, what really opened up my kidneys, like, was a, a the kind of miracle was when I did my first uh, uh, 12, uh, 12 day dry fast in Italy. I had the video out there and uh, it's just my kidneys just went. Whew! And it was the first time that I didn't feel my kidneys. They just completely open. I was peeing out sand pretty much in that fast. And they just like thanked me there was a relief that I've never felt ever in all the years of fasting from that point on. That was a huge, massive revelation. Um, so, um, And do you feel like that dry fasting is what really opens up the kidneys? Along with the master fasting lifestyle, so, it's not yeah, just dry fasting. So that was, that was what I was going to say. You, you need to clear up the GI tract. So basically, master fast. It's a glorified dry fast, Jim refers to it, right? And uh, basically, it's he, he puts this example uh, of a sponge, you know? Imagine your body is like a sponge, a dirty sponge, okay? I, you know, I don't like to say dirty. Hi, Mark. Yeah, but let's, let's say what it is, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's obstructed, okay? Obstructed uh, a sponge and obstructed body. And so if it's dry and you squeeze it, you're not going to release much. You have to flush, you have to wet it. So it absorbs the fluid and then you squeeze and then you'll have the waste and the obstructions released. And then you wet it again and you squeeze and wet. And the squeeze. squeeze is the dry fast. Wet and the, the wet is grape juice and herbs and plasma. The wet master fast days. And then the dry is the dry master fast days. And you wet and you, you dry. And then, yeah, you eat in the middle if you want, as uh, as light as you, or as least obstructive as possible. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to, again, you know, uh, clean the sponge, you know. So keep it food that flushes your body rather than 
uh, flushes through your body rather than food that sits there. You see, sticky, mm -hmm. anything like that. Fats are very sticky. Um, so that's what, how I think about it. It's very simple, but it really makes so much sense to us after these years on a master fast. Um, yeah, and so if uh, you just came, let's say, from eating, and maybe maybe your food is a little bit heavier for like the past week or something, and you're eating every day or something, and then you do a three day, it's gonna be a little bit too much because it's a little bit obstructed the sponge, you know, and it's not uh, flushed enough, you know. Um, if you do a few days of flushing uh, or a week of flushing before these dry days, it will help, you know, it will really help. Mm. Um, so is it okay to have more wet day? Like you have much more wet days than dry days? Oh. Like you say. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But, the protocol. Yeah. It's the protocol. You have your dry windows every day. You have a dry window yeah. every week. You have a dry window every month cycle and every season change. Yeah, but this is what I was saying. You know, I did now three days and I was like, oh, maybe it's a bit too much for me. Well, I was doing semi-dry. I would just take a shot of juice yeah. sometimes. So. But, but were you doing any master fast liquid days before that? Oh, yeah, I did three days liquid. Three liquid and then three dry? Yeah, but the week prior was my in-laws here. So I was like, yeah. we went, yeah, so we yeah. ate, you know, and... I try to eat still very, um, you know, as light as possible. But if you ate every day and probably yeah. a little bit over ate a little bit, because when you eat something new and you're eating every day, you indulge a little bit and we over, tend to overeat, then your body is going to be more obstructed than usual. And so it's going to be a little bit harder to uh, get back mm -hmm. on, dry, especially. So um, uh, the most important thing, honestly, is to make it a lifestyle. So have a nice little program routine for yourself and be consistent. And I'm sure with time, after a few months, you will feel that your kidneys are totally fine. Right? They're mm. not for longer. Yeah, well, yeah, I understand. But when I feel this like pain, I'm kind of starting to feel I'm cut in half. Are, are you using the burn stick? Uh, no, I have to. Oh, burn stick, the Palo Santo. Yeah, I have that. You're, you're massaging the kidneys daily? No, I didn't massage, but I was doing castor oil packs. It's not Palo Santo. This is yeah, but I, I mean a, a burnt stick or Palo Santo, whatever. Anything that's a, a piece of wood that's burnt. We use it for massaging the kidneys every day, deeply. Mm. Just get into them and just slowly massage as deep as you possibly can without hurting yourself, right? A little bit of discomfort's fine. And you dig, dig, dig it in and turn it in counterclockwise direction and just massage mm -hmm. them every day it's going to really help you know physically mm -hmm. you know, as, as with your intent and emotion it's going to really yeah. help you nurture the kidneys um yeah i i'm gonna do that i have that burn stick but i haven't got into it but i also booked like some massages to get like my like i feel like reflexology massage i just want like somebody to just move things in my body so because think, uh, things are really moving. I think mm -hmm. massage therapists are not allowed to massage kidneys. Yeah, usually they don't. Yeah. No, but you know, just generally the, the whole body massage to move the lymph and reflexology. I know, but the kidneys is what moves it all out. So yeah, you yeah. To massage your kidneys or maybe ask your <laughs> therapist to massage it even if she, she's not trained in it. But, mm -hmm. uh, you do it yourself. It's very easy, and you do it daily. And also use acupressure points of kidney, all your kidney points. You can do that. It's just we need to help the kidneys. That's why there's a lot of herbs and formulas focused on kidneys, mm -hmm. because yeah, that's the, the two little organs that probably get most bombarded than anything else. They they get punished by us mm -hmm. by our lifestyles. So we need to support and nurture and love those kidneys like never before mm. and you you know that pain that you're feeling is because of your prior <clears throat> lifestyle your ancestral lifestyles all of those emotions built up there's a many many things the environments that you've lived and so on and so forth so you need to help purge all that out and the kidneys are going to have to release all that a little mm. by little by little and being consistent uh, is going to be the key you know, yeah. over time, you're going to get 
more and more being released. You know, uh, just, you know, when you start seeing urine coming out black, you're gonna go, holy geez, man, where the hell did that come from? <laughs> and so when I feel the pain, is it like indication that I should maybe drink? You know, or I need to go kind of uh, massaging. You would have to. You would have to. Um, uh, use acupressure decide points. Decide on your own. Like, uh, do, do I go a little bit further use. using the tools, or do I break? You know, you can break too. Mm. Use the breath the work. Breathe into that area. The, um, you can break it, but whatever it, you know, it, it's it's a, 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 a process that's inevitable. We're going to have to go through if that's what you're feeling. That's what you're going to have to go through. You're going to have to go through it now, or you're going to have to go through it later. Yeah, it's but you can choice. go through it slowly too. Yeah. You know, keep the obstructing and then go yeah. into a deeper the, 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 the real, the best way for getting those kidneys to really open up is the dry fast. But you have to have a clean GI tract. So we have to work towards cleaning the GI tract. So that's why we have a system. And as we go down that path, we have to uh, continuously focusing on opening up the longer the longer dries on the season changes those are crucial but you have to have be consistent with your daily your weekly your monthly and your season change yeah yeah. That, yeah the most important thing to be consistent with is the lifestyle it's yeah it's the levels, everything the all parts of it the levels is uh, they're all very important and all crucial so or if you would do your own level you do your own your like, tree at your own level but the levels that we have just make it easier uh, but yeah, definitely just love the lifestyle, and uh, and it's a, a lifestyle that helps you release, helps you release, help you release, helps you release. Like uh, you know, you're continuously people doing juice fast. Good luck in opening up those kidneys. You, you can open up a little bit. It ain't gonna happen. I have something gonna happen to because say. the autopilot time goes in from the soul comes comes into the dry into the dry fasting sessions. That's when we connect directly with the connect the creator. From my understanding and my experience and it allows that magical time to take place in the physical mental and emotional where everything starts going back towards the balance at light speed so i love that you say my own experience my own understanding i really like that yeah i can't speak for anybody else yeah, everybody's everybody who shared their experience are very similar to what i went through yeah. so, so <laughs> there's something that you know we're on we're on to something here yeah so um the most important thing for the kidneys in my opinion to help them open up <clears throat> the dry fasting takes you deeper okay without a question it is the deepest form of um uh of like detoxing uh of uh, digging deep of um moving in words uh, in terms of um you know i mean uh, there's dry fasting and uh, different faiths as well uh for a reason again um so the most important thing for the kidneys in my opinion is to make sure your bowels are clean and that's you know you want to uh what do you do you're fasting uh you're master fasting doing the liquid days um, and you want to prepare for a dry, flush as much as you can your bowels. Flush as much as you can. Are you doing colimas? Or? Yeah, like I was doing, I don't do colima. It's like on a, on my bucket list to buy, but I was doing enemas, yes. like yes. two days enemas. Then I went to get colonics and then I started uh, dry fast. Yeah, um, more definitely more washing would help. Um, so washing the colon is huge. It's the easiest, fastest way to uh, to um, to help your kidneys. And uh, one thing you can do on your dry days, if you feel that you're having the kidney challenges, but I would start from the beginning is a uh, colon feeding protocol, right? Which is all you know, all about flushing the bowels mm. while you're dry, flushing while you're dry. So this way your kidneys are, uh, if they don't suffer too oh. much. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting because I was like, if I'm on the dry, you know, I was feeling I want to wash my bowel, but I was on a dry, so I was like, I need to start drinking yeah. and then only wash. Yeah, you, don't yeah, you start. You're just... starting with the colon feeding. You're not dry and then going into colon feed. Because if you're dry and then start washing, it's not a good idea. We mentioned that in the protocol. Yeah, this is what I, you know, I know from yeah, the protocol. You start off 
cold feed. Or if you're doing a dry, then you you would break the dry, you know, do it break the dry for a, depending on how long you went, and you know, so you can get the fluid started going through, and then you can move into a, a colon feeding that way. Mm -hmm. But don't uh, I wouldn't do a three day or four day dry, you know, and then jump into I a think colon feed. You know, I think you say 24 hours if you have done or 48 hours. Yeah, you say 24 hours. But the thing is, when I follow the lifestyle, I only have like four or five days. So really, you know, like I two days I drink juice, then one day I do dry, or like two days, and then I drink one day, and then you know yeah. I go back to eating. But if you want um, to uh, ease your dry, you're having kidney challenges. If it is within uh, 24 or 48 hours, I think we mentioned 48 hours. If it's within 40, like not more than 48 hours, do not start colon feeding uh, when you're into 48 hour dry because it's just too much. Um, maybe within the 48 hours, the, within the first 48 hours, you can start flushing. I think we said 48. Um, I think 24, but yeah, I would need yeah. to check. Okay, let me check the protocol. But yeah. so you say this is kind of an and common challenge that people experience, which over over time kidneys. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was reading in in the mucusless diet healing system where Arnold Eret says like that all these toxins being broken down and put in a bloodstream, and the only way for body to eliminate is through kidneys. And you know, if it's not, then I was like, okay, if it's not open fully, then you know, this is where the pain comes from. You know, the body's trying to get rid of it, but the kidneys are not open enough to do that. And it's kind of energetically, uh, not in, open energetically. Once they open energetically, then you're going to see filtering like crazy. Unless you start, you go back to plugging yourself up again, right? And then it goes back out. To where we were yeah. and you know what i realized like now like for example i've been following the lifestyle but my in-laws came and so we were eating i ate for like seven days and 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 i and i could feel i eat and I, I get so congested like and i was like oh my god am i made out of mucus i'm just feeling this cough that i've been suffering for like six years you know it's not some sort of you know, I, I thought it's a punishment, but, you know, I w awakened through that and, you know, old story, but at the same time, like, no, my just body is like full of mucus is just trying to expel it. Yeah. Well, you know, you've had a cough for all those years. That's, you know, the lungs, is the, the colon is the third lung, as we say. And if, you know, you're, you're having this issue for all those years, there's a lot of obstructions you need to get, you know, flushed out. Yeah. So you, you got to, stay focused and keep working at it keep working at it keep working that's why you're having all these uh kidney challenges with the pains and so on and so forth just uh, stay uh, stay focused and and be consistent and it's gonna all you know all these obstructions that are causing all this we're all, all gonna move out eventually it's just gonna take the time it takes uh, we don't have a, a time frame for you everybody's different but uh, just keep working at it it's all gonna pass it's all gonna get better yeah, yeah, I just checked the protocol. It's 48 hours. So mm. within 48 hours, you can do it. Any 48 hours or more, uh, we say don't do uh, colon washing. After, after hours, dry fasting. 48 hours or more of dry, we say don't do, avoid uh, the colon washing because it's just too much. But do it um, if it's within the 48 hours, yeah. So I would say if I fast for one day, then I need to wait 24 hours to do colon washing. And if I fast more than... You can, no, you can fast. You can wash anytime when you dry. If you want to do colon feeding. Mm. I maybe oh, need to reread the colon feeding because I kind of didn't really focus on it, you know? You're dry from above, you're just washing. Anytime, washing from the bottom. Ah, so, so basically like... I would not be drinking anything from the mouth, but I would be just washing my colon. It's a form of dry fasting. If you oh. see the levels of dry fasting, yeah, and it's the it's mo most it's the most mild level of dry fasting. Yeah. Really I never understood that level, so I kind of never focused on it. You yeah, know, I just skipped it. But it's that's very, the, very, yeah, that's like the that's the most mild level of dry. Because it's very powerful when we have instances where people are in a very challenged state where they can't keep anything down. So that's why we call it colon feeding. How do we feed? By subtraction, mm -hmm. by washing. 
we don't feed by plugging ourselves up more. <laughs> and some people like it's, to it's go the deep. art of subtraction. That's how we feed ourselves. You know, we're not going to be able to drink ourselves to hydration. That's that's a, a myth. Look what's happened with the uh, marketing with the water in the last couple yeah. of centuries. I mean, a couple of uh, decades. It's, it, it, people are not more hydrated. <laughs> they're, they're, they're less hydrated than ever before. They're more obstructed and they just keep drinking this water. Yeah, hydration of the body is all about obstructions. If you are obstructed, you're going to be dehydrated. It's that simple. And if you want to become hydrated, uh, you do obstruct the body. And that's why colon hydrotherapy is called colon hydrotherapy, not because of the water that you get into your body. No, it's because you release obstructions. And when you release obstructions, your body is hydrated. It's, it's the natural state. The natural state is hydration, the obstruction. Um, and the unnatural state is the obstructed state. But I'm not saying, you know, it's bad to eat at all. <laughs> you know, God's, that's God's food. Find your balance with the eating that is obstructive. You can find that's God's food, fruits and vegetables. Yeah. And uh, balance it with the fasting days in your week because it is absolutely beautiful to, um, to have fasting as a lifestyle. Yeah. But this is how I... Hmm? You have lots of great food over there, right? In that area? Oh, yeah. I just wanted to share, like, I was fasting now for, like, five days. And I'm, or six, I'm not sure. I'm going to break it tomorrow. And I'm going to, because I was, I, I normally do four days, but I was, like, eating for seven days. So I was like, I need to balance that out, you know? So, and today we went to shop in the farms and there are pumpkins. Like, they created this pumpkin museum, you know, and squashes and tomatoes. And, and I was like, we shopped at the farm and then we went to grocery, you know, and I was buying these tomatoes and cucumbers and apples and so fresh from farm, like radiating energy. And then we went to grocery store and I was like, oh, that old package stuff, you know, I don't want to even, and I'm already fantasizing about fresh tomatoes and fresh fruit. It's like almost my body naturally wants the god's food the only oh, yeah. you know yeah when, you're when, when you when you clean yourself out and live in that lifestyle you just you're just anytime you go shopping you're gonna be able to scan and be attracted to the best f foods fruits and uh, vegetables in there it automatically you'll go there yeah but i definitely like if i eat more now like i i absolutely feel how i get congested right there my body became like becoming sensitive more sensitive one thing Beautiful. one thing That's i would do want. um you know in the protocol we do say as well which is very important in my opinion one of the most important thing is when you eat you don't eat all day you eat within a maximum yeah. of three hours that is huge on the massive lifestyle and i know it's hard if you to keep your eating within three three hours when you're eating three days or four days or five days a week you know because I, these are your days of eating and you feel like I want to eat, you know, more. Um, um, uh, in my opinion, it is, I know it's, it's challenging, but move it towards later in the day because that's, that's it, it's the end of the day and then you're not gonna eat after. If you're gonna eat all day, you're not gonna feel good. I've done it many times. Yeah, yeah, I'm really, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm following from the book in Mucusless Diet Healing System that I have. And they say, eat the fruit for breakfast. And I eat at 12. And then I eat like at four. I eat maybe a salad or cooked veggie. What does breakfast mean to you? Break to fast. Break fast, you know. Okay, does that have to be in the morning? Mm. Can be no. Exactly. No, but I, I never, like even two years when I started Buteco, like Buteco was like, don't eat any breakfast. It's not necessary. So I started really always eating two meals, like at 12 and at four or five. Right. I don't do it like you guys within three hours. That's kind of, you know, at least I have two meals a day when I eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, One, it's two nice meals a day to, max, yeah. When you incorporate more fasting into your lifestyle, like into your week, I would, uh, I would do less uh, eating hours, to be honest with you. It's huge. Mm. Um, many people do it. They're not master fasters. They have many clients who intermittent fast. They're not master fasters, um, and uh, they feel absolutely amazing. They like your brother too, uh, Gino's brother, for example. He doesn't eat all day, and then in the evening he has a meal, and that's it. 
and he yeah. loves it he started maybe two two three years ago and he just loves it and he still does yeah. it many yeah. people have benefits from intermittent fasting yeah i know a lot of people this is what i started with and even in the mucus was diet healing system where they say you know no breakfast plan sometimes could be yeah, very beneficial I, you know I would, yeah i would say arnold Erd is the father of that idea no breakfast i haven't heard it from anyone before only the people who practice the mucusless diet mentioned that years ago that was the first time i heard it and i believe everybody also does it <laughs> now uh, you know took uh, you know came from that from from that more than 100 years old book so we give him credit for that because he is the first one that i heard of who says skip breakfast he's the first yeah. one who says skip breakfast and i really like his teachings it's like yeah. really when you read and reread it you can really get deeper like he he really knew stuff you know back then so many years ago absolutely yeah it was an amazing um, and when you reread really like so I, I i have a book next to my bed now and when i face a challenge i go back and i reread the chapter for example a transition diet or when i stray away from like eating healthier you know and i start eating a bit more obstructive i go back and i read again or i or i go on your website watch the pictures of the foods you know i was like oh this is how i'm supposed to eat but I, what I also realized that he's emphasizing a lot on transition diet and which made me to realize like for some, I've been kind of in transition diet for like three years, but when you come off like really heavy diet and you go into the fasting and if, like you said, if you would fast it for long and after you would crave everything. And this is for me where I believe transition diet and fasting together combined over a long period of time is what really works you know yeah i, mean, I think um, you know you, you know when it comes to food we have it laid out what's the least obstructive food and what's the most obstructive you know like we do mention that and uh arnold Eret, uh, did a great job uh, of course uh, emphasizing a lot of uh these foods as well and uh, before us, you know, more than 100 years ago. And, uh, but of course, for us, uh, our experience, we added to the protocol. Um, and we both come from raw food. So uh, the least obstructive food, in my opinion, is raw foods and vegetables um, without uh, the fats. You know, like um, many people do that in, in the raw food. Raw fruits, not vegetables. Raw fruits first, and then raw salads and stuff like that come after. Um, still you know, raw salads are not that heavy at all as long as they don't have the oils and the nuts and the seeds you know um and um yeah so uh your body as you live the mastery fast lifestyle which like fasting days during the week and some eating days as you do that you will find that your body will give you a lot of feedback so it's great that you read the information uh on you know on a book master fast website maybe other places too but then when it comes to your experience boy are you going to learn that's where you will learn the most about food you will learn yeah. the most when you're fasting and eating and then fasting again and then eating and then fasting again and then eating you will say okay this food is actually a little bit obstructive um or i can't have too much of it you know if i have it i have i have to have very little of it because otherwise it's heavy for me yeah you know, so you yeah, and that was exactly happening to me. I was like realizing, even though I was kind of in a transition diet for like, you know, I didn't eat meat, I was eating lighter and lighter. And I was like, I was realizing for the people who eat sad diet and they would jump into master fast, I think they would crave all sorts of things because, like, I realized I fasted what, for like master fast, you know, no, 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 but after, right? After, after, yeah. After, because I realized I fasted for five days. And at some point I was like, I want this tomato with sour cream. I never ate that, but I used to eat it in childhood. You know, tomato and sour cream and salt, pepper. And I was like, I haven't ate this in ages, but I crave for it. And I was like, yeah, as you strip the layers, you start craving all the things mm -hmm. you encouraged from childhood. Absolutely. And I was like, this is why I think it's very important you eat transition diet and you fast. And then you kind of 
eat again, you stray off and you go mm. back into it. You will learn and, a lot about food. Yeah. You will learn a lot about food when you start fasting. A lot. And about your body and how much feedback it gives you actually, like unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, especially like when I did the level five, years ago that's when i was like wow you know this is very interesting you know like it, like the feedback was just crazy right on my face i used to eat more than three hours a day um when i ate and and i remember fran when she was another admin on the master fast she was like also did 108 a couple of times and um she did the level five with me as well and she was like, whoa, what do you learn about eating when you eat this way? Um, it was amazing, amazing insight. Yeah, just confirming each other's experiences, you know? And yeah. she kept going with it for a while. She did amazing. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's absolutely beautiful, but you have to really find your balance with Master Fast because it's quite powerful. And without balance, uh, the benefits are, it's hard to see the benefits, you know? Yeah this is why I was like sitting yesterday down and I was like why am I doing this I it's not because I felt bad but it was I was feeling I'm going so deep into like into myself into the spirit and it's like I'm like woof you know I really need to sit down and write it what's the you know I remember like Rana said once like when you did 108 days and you were like why am I doing all of that you know and I felt really the same way yeah. oh yeah I mean, when i did especially when i did the three-day drives on uh, the, those long master fast the first one especially yeah you would ask yourself um what am i why am i doing this exactly <laughs> like, yeah. I feel like i'm dying you know like <laughs> but now no. i know better but um, yeah yeah, it's a journey and I feel like on the drive fast like I sleep so deep and then I wake up I always can't open my eyes because I don't know where I am you know I'm like where I am and yeah but it's a journey and even my in-laws were visiting and um, my partner's father got really why are you fasting you're gonna die you know that's so terrible and it triggered so much in him it was unbelievable like he was like doesn't stop with were family you, and friends. Were Doesn't you fasting stop. when he came? No, no, no. But I oh. last days I was feeling really sluggish and I said I need to start fasting, but I couldn't like I would just skip one meal and then I would fall into eating something again. <laughs> and they were like, but when they left, I right away just one day I struggled and then I went into the yeah. fasting. Yeah, but they he was so triggered. He was like telling me all like how you know if i'm gonna share this with the world people will sue me and it's so horrible and fasting is a religious practice and it's like i was like all oh, this blah blah but he was almost like something inside of him got triggered so much absolutely some belief systems you know that he could just not handle it and seeing me like being disciplined and really following it and really you know like dedicating my time to it and effort and it was like very interesting. Is he is he not into like he thinks it's a bad thing that it's a religious thing? Yeah, first he's <laughs> yeah, so it's a religious like, thing. I don't know how people think anymore. Yeah, and, and for him, I think he was involved in some church thing at some point with Mormons and then got bad experience and whatever now say the word religion and it's like ah, you know, that's yeah. Mm. Yeah, you know, yeah. and then you know he was like oh you know there was a woman she had a cancer and she fasted and died i was like yeah because she maybe she was very toxic and she had to do like you know very carefully her fasting she had to know what she's doing yeah so ah it doesn't matter you know <laughs> yeah i know i know what i'm doing and i follow my heart and I, you know people occasionally somebody fasts and they dies because you know, they're, like you said, they're very, very toxic and uh, it's their time to go, et cetera. But um, they just, the body uh, goes into the uh, uh, drowning state, it grounds it in its own filth because it can't release the stuff fast mm -hmm. enough. That's why we're, we're so adamant about following the protocol. But, you know, yeah. and again, you know, people are dying 
Well, they're eating every day. So yeah, who's must dying, must. which which category is dying more? The ones are fasting or the yeah, ones are Yeah, and fasting. I don't even think it's about it. It's like it's where are you in your journey? And you know, for me saying that, you know, he's just very involved in this like social structure and oh, this is how the structure is built, and you know, we need to follow the laws and everything. And oh, look, the person died because they fasted. Yeah. Who can say that? You know, that could be one of the million things why that well, person about, died. Oh, oh, she has done chemo and radio. Yeah, exactly. How about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is what it is. People will believe whatever they want. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the world we live in. Uh, yeah. Well, free will. <laughs> yeah, um, it's very interesting. Yeah, what I want to say is my first fast, my first 108 days, I did become very small for the first time in my life. Um, and uh, that scared my family. <clears throat> I didn't see them very often through my 108, but maybe maybe uh, three, four, five times, but big occasions. How much was your weight? Um, I got down to probably 40 kilos was my minimum, 40 kilos. Mm. um so yeah so um um and uh you know like they got really upset that i became that way you know um and they were giving me they couldn't i think they were unable to express themselves in a sometimes we do that when we communicate we, we have difficulty uh communicating in a gentle way and so it kind of uh, pushed me and I also reacted. So it was hard the first time. The first fast, it was hard. But then I ate and I gained weight. And then they saw me and I, yeah, I'm fine. And then I fasted again and I lost uh, a little bit. But then I, when, when I did the second one, I think, from the second one onwards, they stopped telling me anything about because they know I am okay. So that's the yeah. thing. They worry about you. Um, if you look uh, different, they're gonna worry about you. Yeah. Because that's not, they, not normal at all they, to be people small. People interpret, you know, lot that weight weight loss is being sick, right? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. weight gain when I gain like ten kilos, uh, that's okay. Yeah. When but that's the thing, you know, where where I was feeling like my in law wasn't expressing his. He is worried. One was part of his social structure beliefs. Another way he was worried, really, you know, like, oh, you're dying because they believe that, right? Yeah, yeah you're younger than him, right? They believe, you know, you'd be dead without if you miss a meal, you know? Oh, yeah. You have less life experience than him, so it's okay in a way, you know. He's a, he's a, he's yeah, I don't, yeah, even he has a lot, like old people, I respect old people, but some of them really didn't get a lot of wisdom throughout their life. You know, it's hard sometimes. It's hard, especially uh, communication can be difficult. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. The so, what is your weight now, Rana? Like, I'm just curious. Um, I think maybe forty one and a half the last time I measured. So mm -hmm. I'm, so I go down too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I am at fifty now, and now I I feel and look okay. Also, what's what's your height? One seventy two. Yes, yeah, so you're taller than me. So yeah, I feel like if I go a bit down than that, I don't lose anymore as much, but the first fast, I would just like drop five kilograms right there. <clears throat> but I feel yeah. if I go more, like I will look very skinny. Yeah, well, yeah, you might look very skinny. You might look very skinny. Yeah, I had to upgrade my whole closet now. <laughs> no, we don't have to. We don't have to. Minimal. Yeah, have to minimal. And we're worried about that, yeah. Minimalism, as long as you wear clean clothes, who cares? Unless you want different colors. <laughs> if, uh, you know, people, a lot of people are into the vanity of how they look, and that's a big thing. It's okay. It's so, right. But uh, it's, it's different. You know, when you do this, at some point you will say, you know what? I love what i'm doing and it just doesn't matter it comes first yeah or maybe not maybe some people are not ready for that yeah but i i, I don't mind at all um yeah i mean I, after six years of um up and down 
uh, for me, I just want stability. That's all. I just want balance. And um, I don't want the fluctuation in my weight. That that hurts my body more than anything. No, not the weight loss. It's the fluctuation that hurts me more than anything. Every single cell of my body it hurts and uh, struggles when I go up and down with um, with that kind of imbalance. So uh, that's why I'm a big fan of just doing it as a lifestyle. Find your balance so that you do not fluctuate with anything, not just your weight, your emotions. Uh, find your balance and um, let the body do its thing. And you just do your part. You know, you do what you can and um, leave the rest to God because God made this body and it's very intelligent. So it's beyond you. It's beyond your brain, you know? Yeah, so, when, whenever we get uh, comments from other people, just say, listen, I understand your concerns, but I feel freaking amazing. I wish you would fucking try this. <laughs> but when I look at you both guys, like Gino, like, feels like rana you look quite you know quite slim right mm -hmm. i don't want to say word skinny mm -hmm. but when i look at gino like from his face he doesn't you don't you don't look skinny but rana looks skinny because all like i know. fast more than he does oh i mm -hmm. see so what are your levels guys like you rana said you're level five right yeah i'm doing level five yeah. and gino are you doing? I might fall off something. I'm all over the place right now. <laughs> Why are you all over? <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, like I do it's more fasting, and I do a lot of um, my uh, daily dry as well. I love, mm. um, I, I love the daily dry too. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I'm doing it um, uh, in accordance with my faith as well. So it's a practice of faith and master fast at the same time. And that's mm -hmm. um, it, it's beautiful, but it, it's it can be a long grind. That that yeah, I lose weight. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I bet you, if anybody does it, they will lose weight too. Yeah, like I feel like I I like you know now fifty kilograms. Like I kind of look a bit like a model, you know. Like I it's always when I was. You. It's not up to you. <laughs> yeah. It's not your brain. Put your brain aside. <laughs> but it was like. Oh, that's kind of nice. You know, I always wanted to be slimmer and I always been like size medium, but now size small. And I was like, oh, that's nice. I like, and as you say, Gino, you feel amazing. You feel so much energy and, you know, just great. But I was like, I don't want to drop more weight than I'm like 50. So <laughs> eat. Do you want to lose weight? Eat. Obstruct yourself. <laughs> uh, but then, you know, again, it's not. No, but no as you say, balance. At some point, you find balance. Your body reaches balance. Today is day for me, sixty-three on uh, level five, and so um, I have to give it at least a year <laughs> for my body to find balance with uh, with weight, you know, fluctuations and stuff. Because I was up and down with weight. Mm -hmm. I was up and down, and uh, when I get obstructed, everybody thinks it's healthy for me. Mm -hmm. Like I look healthy. So mm -hmm. it's not, you know, I've been through this for six years where when I obstruct myself, many people tell me I look amazing when I feel extremely obstructed and everything negative, you know, you can think of because it's from one extreme to another. Absolutely imbalanced. And they tell me I look amazing. Because you look like part of that. And then. Um, Energetically. And then um, <clears throat> when I uh, fast again, they tell me, oh, you're fasting again. Because they can tell from my look, you know, uh, without tell telling me I, I lost weight. They tell me, you're fasting again. <laughs> you look like you're fasting again. <laughs> mm. But um, I really, I just, listen, I just want to enjoy my life. I don't care about looking small or big. I just want to enjoy my life. And uh, there is so much in my life right now to focus on than my that is more important to me than my weight. Um, I don't. And if you feel good, right? If I you don't feel care, you know, what anybody says, really, I don't care what anybody says. Um, my family doesn't say anything anymore at all. At all. Mm. Um, she just accepted. Yeah, and if I fast many times, most of the time actually, when I meet them, I'm fasting because I fast uh, most of the day. And I eat uh, like within three hours when sometimes I'm back home, you know, after I met them, uh, I come back and I eat. 
Um, and uh, they do not say one word to me. They just say, are you eating? I say, uh, you know what, I'm fasting today. And I sit down on the dining table with them and I have a plate, but it doesn't have anything on it. And I have a normal conversation with them. And um, I bring food too. Mm, you don't eat food. what they what they cook, right? You bring your own I food, bring right? it, but I don't eat, I'm fasting. I, if Gina's eating, I make sure, you know, I like to break something. So I bring a salad, I bring whatever stuff, um, um, you know, I made. So I always like to contribute with the food, even though I'm fasting. But I sit mm. down with them and um, yeah. sometimes I eat if uh, I stay there long enough and it's time for me to eat and it's an eating day, I would eat. But most of the days, five days a week, I'm fasting. And then you eat two days within three hours of the window. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you're a superstar of fasting. For, uh, 63, <laughs> 63 days in a row now. Yeah. Mm, so yeah, like it's, it's fasting and fasting. eating. Even when I, on my, even on my eating days, I'm dry until sunset. Even on my eating days. So every single day I am dry until sunset from dawn. Sometimes before dawn, sometimes in the, the night before. So quite a bit of um, mm. and um, and I love it. It really helps me stay focused on. Um, I'm enjoying both eating and fasting. I mean, I want to do it for a year before I can um, conclude and say this is absolutely amazing. So far, I love it. Sixty-three days of. Um, basically fasting with my faith in accordance mm. to my faith and master fast uh, combining them together and it's just so beautiful i love it mm. yeah nice and when you say from dawn to sunset it's like about 12 hours like in protocol yeah, right during the day when you're up you know it's not like when you're sleeping it's very different. Oh. very different oh yeah fasting when you're up is different than fasting when you're sleeping yeah it's so when you sleep it's easier you don't feel anything but yeah. when you're uh, working you're doing this uh, sometimes i clean the house i spend like six seven hours of just boop, 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 you know move 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 non-stop the other day we carried the uh, stuff together you know like some pieces of wood together and i mean it wasn't i didn't have to carry very heavy stuff but i did i do i don't care i work and um um, and I have a lot of stuff on the computer mainly. It would be nice to, I would like to exercise. That's another thing, but I'm not gonna put my, right now exercise is not my priority. Mm. And what is your goal like to do, why you're doing one year of uh, level five? Master fast lifestyle is the- Just lifestyle. for your faith. Master fast lifestyle is the lifestyle that I see as optimal when it comes to eating and fasting, you know? Um, and uh, um, I, I do it with my faith because why not? You know, I would love to just you know practice more. Why not practice mm. my faith even more? And if master fast, master fast, as I said, is a tool to help me with my faith. But my mm. faith is the foundation. Master fast is not my foundation. Master fast is not my foundation. It's not my faith. My mm. faith is my faith. It's a much stronger foundation. And master fast is a lifestyle that I bring into the practice. Um, and, and I feel that's important to distinguish because you don't want to think that master fast is gonna resolve all your problems. No, that's why I think when it comes to emotions and this and that, it, you wanna go deeper into your faith practice, you know? Um, whatever it is, you know, like I'm not gonna be judging, you know? Uh, who's has you know uh, if you practice buddhism and you love that then that's that's a great practice too you know um you know for me i love i love i follow muhammad and i love that way I, when i was a kid that's what i did and i always loved it it really helped me it helped me focus it helped me focus on the you know doing the good things and staying away from things that are negative you know um, and it's, it's just the truth, basically. Um, staying away from the 
uh, anything that's negative in your life and and focusing on the truth. And, and so that's basically your fasting for your faith, but there is no goal. Like, do you like you want to maybe no. fix your weight or something? Oh, no, 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 for, no. no goals. No. Mm. No. It's no, just but an... I'm saying if I want to, to talk about my weight, I would have to wait long term because I haven't been stable enough with my lifestyle for a for a whole year consistently without falling off. Okay. So you were falling off, right? Going back to yeah, eating and yeah, like after four months, usually, um, I find myself falling off from the levels, even uh, level seven, even level seven. When I said one time I want to do liquidarian, and I'm just gonna go, uh, and I'm not, I wasn't hungry or anything, um, but I think I got maybe a little bit bored and I wanted to explore some food. Uh, when I invited people over, because I like to host people sometimes when I make food. And I said, okay, maybe let me try this, a little bit of this. And before I know it, I feel I felt like, okay, it came back, whatever the feeling of wanting to eat again. So that was hard, very hard. Um, but yeah, after I found after four months of one of the levels uh, of level five or level six or seven, um, I found that I, um, I fall off um so far but i i want that so that's my my goal of course is balance you know so mm. being consistent with what i do if now i feel amazing then i want to be consistent with it and um i would say after a year um i would have be in a better place to say you know what is it was a great experience um and share more you know mm. but for now it's still mm. fresh because i have done this before yeah. Uh, I've done level five like four months many times before and um before I fell off. Um yeah, I, you know, but this time I'm doing it differently. This time I'm doing it with my faith. I've never done that before. I've done it for a month, two months within level five, level seven, but I've never done it every single day and like planning to go on for good, you know, like that um so well, that's, good that's good me. luck with that then we'll, it's really would be interesting to because to that's you. yeah that's bringing the faith component into it and making it the foundation and making master fast the lifestyle rather than so master fast again is just for me a lifestyle that i can bring into my my uh my life and um yeah incorporate it with the faith and just mm. um nothing more than that it's a beautiful, absolutely the best tool, fasting lifestyle I have come across, hands down, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I have not seen anything um, more thorough and um, more efficient and safe, safe. I have to say, master fast is very safe if you follow the protocol, you know. We are very you know, strict with the protocol because it works. Um, and if uh, you stay away, steer away from it, it can be dangerous <laughs> if you don't do follow the protocol. Mm -hmm. But if you follow the protocol, in my opinion, from my experience, and trust me, we have helped tens of thousands of people, it is safe when you follow. You don't follow, mm -hmm. yeah, you can fall into trouble. Um, and we feel like we don't want nothing to do with people who do not follow because uh, this is too much work for us. Just and, yeah. safe for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And and this is where I feel like I fasted different kind, like, you know, water fasting. And you know, I tried a couple of days when I didn't have herbs to fast. So it really feel it feels very different when you drink juice. And I, I kind of still trying to energetically understand how the juice works. For me, it's like, you know, where I read is everywhere the only real fast is water fast or dry fast, right? You know, and all of those prophets that fasted in, you know, like whatever, Jesus in a desert for 40 days or the other prophets, you know, it's almost, I assume they did dry fast when they say in the desert. So for me, it's like an analogy of like of dry fasting, you know, he didn't drink anything. Wasn't it dry? Uh, Jesus? No, drink water in the desert. Yeah, I, I just assume because it says it was in the desert. So for me, it's kind of an, an almost analogy, you know, that 
he wasn't even in a desert. He was just fasting without water, you know, without anything. Maybe, yeah. The true fast is only dry fast, not water fast. Yeah, that's what Gina says all the time. Uh, it's, a master fast just helps you keep going with the dry, you know? So I wonder when we do wet days, right? When we drink juice, does it like does it still help to open up the kidneys, like to really? Of course. Remember the sponge. You gotta it, clean out the colon. Ima imagine the kidney is the is the sponge, like every organ. The kidney is a sponge. How do you clean it? If it's dry, if it if it's obstructed, meaning it's dehydrated, it's dry. The sponge is dry, and you do this, you have pain. That's why we get pain. When you get pain, it means it's obstructed. Your kidneys are obstructed. We're trying to squeeze something out and you can't dislodge. It's dry. That's it's why you get pain. But if you keep it, like you don't dry, you flush it first and then you dry. So you release obstructions, the filtration, you know. And then you open it, it opens up because you're drinking again. Mm. Yeah, it, it flushes. It's you know, when you dry, everything becomes like that, right? It squeezes, mm. the organs are squeezed. Mm. A lot of toxins and obstructions and then you open up and you wash you drink and you flush yeah so yeah. so the grape juice kind of washes it much better than the water right oh yeah yeah no comparison so the, 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 the drawing that joanna shared from her download i saw that and i really liked and i was like oh i i got something to look at now it was very interesting there you go <laughs> so is your like your yes, belief system is very similar to that it's very in line with with what we uh, have the understanding of yeah so basically it's about you know the master fast the juice you know Gina says it brings balance he says you know and that's what john was saying it's uh, done through order it doesn't just go in and you know whatever it, and out, out of order it, there is an order when it goes down there's something about it Gina says subtraction is the key <laughs> So something that aids in removing these obstruction is going to help you move towards balance. Water, what's water? Yeah, water is um, no, I don't. You know, there's very little power in water. Mm -hmm. And plus, what what kind of water is there outside now? You know, like if it's like like straight from nature, that's another story. You can try cl own. cleaning grease with water and then try cleaning grease with lemon or grape juice and tell me what you see the difference. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting because this is why I was like so deeply like everything makes sense, but I'm still trying to like, You're I was trying. asking for a creator to really show me how does this grape juice works, you know, it, because I think it and you will know. Yeah. yeah, you don't need to answer everything, but it works. Let's go for the monkey mind. <laughs> Honestly, just uh, be thankful it works through his experience, his very first 40 day experience. Just grape juice was not a good idea now, we don't recommend that. But um, that's 31 years ago, and he had two years of being bedridden, so we don't want to do that. Um, but um, yeah, the grape juice is very powerful, very powerful. It was um, mentioned in one of the books, you know, uh, somebody mentioned it in the past, like maybe 100 years ago or something. Grape juice has no? been around forever. Yeah, but well, somebody mentioned it about uh, cleansing power. Joanna, well, Dr. Morse is talking a lot about, and doc, like Professor yeah, Spira. Not, not, no, no, well, there's the grape no. cure book. Uh, not, not cooked grape juice. It's yeah, but then nobody speaks about cooked juice. Nobody. Only about fresh juice, you know? The, one, the grape uh, cure? Grape cure. Is it, but it doesn't talk about cooked juice in it. I actually read it now. Yeah. I finished. It does. It does. Yeah. No. Yeah. Really? Where I need to go and look again because I, I I was reading through the whole book, waiting to see where is a cooked juice and I didn't see anywhere. It's there. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you know I think uh, thir thirty one years ago when he did it, he wanted to do a fast. I think he read Arnold Ertz, right? And you wanted to do a fast, and you went to the, your friend. He was a herbalist. He had a shop, and you told him I want to do a fast, and he told you here try this juice. So he knows a little bit, right? About the grape juice and the power of the grape juice. He told Gina, you know, here, try this juice. And he used to come in big gallons, right? And uh, that's what he did. He grabbed uh, bottles and uh, he did it 31 years ago. 
Yeah. So your friend knew a little bit about the power of the grape juice. It's, it's grapes in general. They uh, cooked grape juice, yeah. You know, we knew, we've always known that grapes were uh, powerful uh, but cleansing cooked. food. Mm. Yeah, cooked, whatever. But, you know, 100 years ago, compared to today, you, you can't compare the state of humanity today than 100 years ago. 100 years ago, they were toxic. Arnold Hare was talking about how toxic people mm. were with drugs and stuff. Today, we're at a whole different level of obstruction. Whole different level. Mm. And that's why the, the, uh, it's so, it could be so dangerous for people because they, like, as we said earlier, we, you drown in your own filth. The body cannot get quick of the obstructions fast enough when you, the body starts loosening them up during that fasting state. That's the danger. You drown in your own filth. And it shuts, you know, the organs start shutting down and stuff and you, you cease to exist. So, but, but when you have a system where you can do with prudence and allow the body to move that stuff out, there's no problem anymore. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. what we have. So this is what I what I understand from my own journey now right now that grape juice is kind of loosening up things and what help and then plasma pudding is kind of collecting it and we are all with that and with herbs supporting yeah. the tissues we are just kind of washing it out 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 of our body. Herbs work on emotional first and foremost. We're using the spirit of the herbs to open up stagnant energies different organs to systems. keep the energy flowing and open mm, yeah that's key just to not get into the uh, position of uh, uh, drowning in your own filth you need energy flow yeah well what i can tell it like tastes amazing when i drink mm -hmm. grape juice and i'm mm, mm. yeah well, it's the grape right you can pomegranate or you can use yeah. watermelon or you can use <clears throat> different berries you know. And then have, yeah. You know, people have done it with the red grapes. They're not as powerful as the darker grapes, but they work. Um, so there's, uh, you know, there's many dark juices that uh, we can use out there. And the herbs mm -hmm. taste amazing with the kidney tea. You know, if you don't want it as strong, mix it with some lighter juices. You know, somebody just posted, can I use the apple? I would use them. I wouldn't throw them away. I'd, I'd use them and use them. Yeah, <laughs> it's not as powerful, but who cares? It's it's growing in your yard. Use them, and then I wouldn't throw them away. <laughs> yeah, you can use the apples. <laughs> you know, or you mix it with some of the grape. You know, so it's not as strong. Some people, you know, it, 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 it's it's too much purging mm -hmm. happening. So what do we tell them? Go down to green juices, or go down to a lighter juice to slow it down a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's many, many, many ways you can. Um, you know, have it working for you, and it's infinite in possibilities. We have so many tools and, and so, so much, uh, a little more, a little more knowledge than Arnold Laird had, <laughs> yeah. and that's why uh, you know we've seen so much magical things happen. Uh, it's just uh, awesome. Yeah, and I think that's in my journey as well. Like, there's part of me like says. How come the store-bought cooked juice could be good for you? And another part, somewhere deeply, really trusts and believes like I need to carry on and continue with the process. And, you know, this is the only reason why I'm asking questions because there is still in me a part that's like... Yeah, you, you can grow your own grapes and juice and cook it yourself. No, that would be too much work for me. Uh -huh. I don't want to do that. We have to have a farm, a great farm. <laughs> I would, I would, I would never do master fast if I would need to do that, you know. <laughs> uh, we had uh, Gabriellas who, uh, for two years in a row, bought tons of Concord grape juice oh. and juiced them, and did a, a Concord grape juice fast, right, with raw juice. Oh, okay. mm. before master fast. Yeah, he did that. Yeah, raw, raw. And juice. he was, he was the one that was used to be paralyzed, right, half paralyzed his body. And when he did master fast, he goes, my goodness gracious, <laughs> absolutely no comparison from the raw mm. grapes. All that work I did and uh, but also, didn't do know, anything really for Yeah, me. for sure. The grape, uh, the this grape juice. Same grape. grapes, <clears throat> cooked, raw. But also, you know, master fast in general, you know, I did before Imagino, 100 day raw cantaloupe juice fast. And it was absolutely 
mm, no comparison in terms of power to the master fast. One part is because it's the juice itself is uh, maybe I drank too much. I don't know. Um, maybe I overdrank. Maybe Gabriel overdrank it. So there was really no power there. Um, the cooked, I think, is uh, something. You know, there's something about the cooked. Um, so you found a crack in the matri matrix, and you even don't know exactly why fully why it works, but it works. Yeah, I found the crack in 1990 when I did my first 40 day juice fast. Yeah. But I didn't understand. But do yeah. you understand now? Of course, it works. It works. That's all we understand. <laughs> we have the under understanding of why the cooked juice is more powerful because it's the atomic structure is opened up. That's all we need to know. You know Who that's, cares about that's also your understanding, but it could be anything really that we don't know. It mm. works, is all we know. Anyways, mm. another thing. So the one thing is the juice itself. I don't believe the cantaloupe juice law was powerful at all. It was delicious, but it was not powerful. Um, and then the other thing is um, the protocol, the master fast is a structured protocol. Yeah, now it's more structured than before. But when I, six years ago, when I met Gino, it was already very structured. He put it in a structured way. There is the everything. The, uh, there is the juice, there is the uh, plasma pudding, there is the dry fasting component. Uh, there is the herbs and there is the uh, washing the colon. So these five components were always parts of the protocol. It was a structured protocol. I did not have that. I did not even co comprehend that when I did my own 100-day raw juice fast because I had no experience. I think I was only one year into raw food. And my mm. friend wanted to do a long fast. And I said, fine, I'll do it with you. I was not a, really interested so much. But anyways, I did it. I was worried the whole time. I was worried, am I doing, you know, am I gonna die, am I, you know? Really, because I didn't have experience with fasting. Mm -hmm. But when I met Gino and I followed the protocol, that was something completely different. And I can imagine the same thing with Gabriel's. He didn't have much experience with fasting. He was just playing and experimenting. But when he came to the master fast, everything is designed to help you release from the mm -hmm. juice to the plasma pudding, to the colon washing, to the dry fasting, to the um, um, herbs, you know, everything is how, uh, there to help you release. So Yeah, but it's all equally important, right? When you say like master fast is glorified dry fast, but also the drinking days are important. The dry fast days are important, The whole right? lifestyle is around dry fasting. That's why we call it a, a glorified dry fast. Yeah, you can have You, you can't have one without the other. But the dry fast is like small part of it. Like you just have a daily and then one day a week and then three days that's a not, month. It's not a small part of it. That's a massive part of it. That's a big part. Yeah. That's the most, <laughs> everything happens in the dry fasting time. When you're consistent, that's, that's you know, quite a bit of dry fasting. Everything happens in the dry fasting times. Mm. I just feel that maybe I, I drink then more than I dry, but I try to follow protocol and it's like, like, am I dry fasting enough? <laughs> I was just kind of thinking that. You know, um, after we say we say after four, three, two days, but on full master fast. So after you have done enough master fasting, then you can experiment with the protocol. You can increase your daily dry. So now I'm increasing my daily dry. You can, um, uh, you know, uh, reduce your juice, and you can. So you can play safely because you have enough experience, and you can just experiment and go with how you feel. Um, mm. So with experience, with time, you can play around and you can increase your... One day at a time, Christina. Yeah, you can play around with the protocol. It's... Make it work. It's a beautiful journey. Embrace it. Enjoy every part of it. Whatever comes your way, jump for joy. Whenever you have challenges, jump for joy. Because mm. you know you're uh, going to come out stronger. Every time you have a challenge, you know you're going to come out stronger. How do we know that? Because tens of thousands of people have gone through it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So why are you going to be any different? <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I'm going to keep going and see, you know, I'll check in with myself. And, you know, I think everything is in the protocol important, you know, and like, as you say, everything around the lifestyle and even 
in my journey, I still want to enjoy food, the God's food, the least obstructive food, but, you know, and fasting and dry fasting and all of those parts of it are equally important, at least in my journey. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. You know, don't get fixated on wanting to know who, or where, when, why, how, and all that. It's, I've been down that path. It's, it just sends us spiraling up the confusion to want to know all that stuff. And it doesn't help you. It doesn't help you knowing it. You know, for if you want to explain to someone, you feel like you want to explain to someone. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. Trust me. I <laughs> because, know. you know, like the thing is like, but for me, it's not to explain to someone when you're just starting. You have to have yeah. experience. But the thing is for me, like, I don't want to know, like, I know people who want to just know where, when, why I don't. The knowledge somehow comes from inside of me intuitive, intuitively, right? And that's what, and for me about grape juice, I haven't received anything intuitively yet. And I'm like, you know, for me, that's the only part that is like, I'm asking Listen, for like, guidance. You know, you know um, you don't need to know exactly how it works, but what you can say, because you know, I know at least, and we know is that cooked grape juice helps you release more than raw grape juice. Simple. If somebody is curious, if somebody is curious, if one day we want to teach people who are, you know, uh, interested and we want to tell them why this is better than this, this helps you release more than um, our raw grape juice. Yeah. And then they say, <laughs> oh yeah. And then they say, yeah, because there is a lot of sugar. Uh, what do you mean? It's the same. Raw or cooked is the same amount of sugar. Yeah. Matter. So this is they say this is why you have energy because you drink and you there is lots of sugar. Yeah, yeah. forget about that. Sugar is another big issue. Okay. But uh, this one here we're talking about why this compared to raw, this works, the other one doesn't. How? God knows. Okay. Mm. But we know that this one works better than the other one. And helping mm -hmm. you release, and that's the goal of Master Fast, to help you release obstructions. And that's all we need to know. Gino explains it through plasma. Other people don't, don't really get plasma. You don't need to get plasma. This works. He got it 31 years ago that it works. And now we still say it works. So this juice works. Raw doesn't work nearly as far, like as... Um, um it's not nearly as powerful as cooked so we go with cooked and this one is much easier for us to add to access at this point just imagine i, I you know I, I put it aside for two and a half decades believing raw was law mm -hmm. to come full circle back to gain the understanding that i, I missed the whole freaking boat even when I, because even though i experienced it way back then right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he slept on it for two and a half begins 25 years and now maybe back. sometimes it takes the time it takes right when i was part of a master fast group for two years and i was like why wow, what's the point of it you know and sometimes it takes 25 years you know and here it goes <laughs> but Things yeah, I, now. <laughs> yeah it takes 25 years and and rana i wanted to ask you i was reading this book um um uh, the bowel management uh, no tissue cleansing through bowel management and he talks a, lo a lot about iris reading and you do the iris reading right mm -hmm. i was wondering do you know when we had a session you read my iris but most probably rana would do more comprehensive reading right okay yeah so i think i'm gonna book a session with you if you have any availabilities <laughs> I was reading and I was like, oh, I really want this like comprehensive iris reading. Yeah, it's good to have at least one time read. But you know, Gina gave you a general idea and, and the iris analysis is honestly general. Like you, um, it, it's a general look at, um, you know, it's a reflection of uh, What's the going on in the body. Yeah. But it's a general, it's, it's, it's general, like, uh, I don't like to go too much into details because I feel it's uh, not, uh, the, the, not the way it should be. Um, I believe it should be looked at iridology as a general way of looking at things, not to go too much into 
Yeah, <laughs> but I do my best to uh, to read it in uh, the way I learned it to read it. Right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's like again would be like we're looking into physicality to find what where's the mm -hmm. where's the core of everything. Yeah, but they're the, the gates to the soul. Yeah. yeah, and when I was looking at these images in the book, I was like how he was describing, you know, the path of the eye where we like have coughs and bronchitis and we suppress everything with medication and you go to deeper suppression and then you go to really like almost a decay of the tissues. And I was like, wow, that really looks like my life journey, you know, here in explained in the, in the eyes. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that would be something interesting to, you know, to, to get done in my healing journey. I was like, you know, I would be curious to see. Yeah. Um, hmm. Decay of the tissues. I don't know. Bernard Jensen is a, uh has been doing iridology for, or was doing iridology for a very long time. He uh, probably, yeah, reads it. Iridologist, iridologist would read things a little bit differently. I mean, no, no, but he was explaining like almost by the eye, how the body kind of, if you obstructed more and more and more, how the tissues can't anymore recover and they're just like almost mm -hmm. starts to decay. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a good word, but yeah when he was like an experiment where like there was a scientist done experiment there was a cell that it was being given nutrients and the water was being cleansed every day and then the cell was living for 29 years until the like some assistant forgot to change the water from yeah, the excretion with, it died what happens with stagnant water it goes it goes that you know starts to stink right yeah. If you don't have energy moving, you have to change the water. That's why the cell is living. And otherwise, it goes stagnant. It goes, yeah. it goes bad. So, you know, when there's a stagnation in an organ, for example, there's an energy not moving through it. So, of course, it decays. That's why it decays, because this energy is not moving through it. It's full of obstructed. That's why we need to open it up, get the uh, obstructions flowing out. So energy can start flowing through it and then it revitalizes and rejuvenates itself from the information from the soul. You don't need to know how it works. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. All, we just have to know the basics. Remove the obstructions and it restores itself and it works. So that's all we really need to know. It's uh, not rocket science here with all mm -hmm. these, uh, you know, lab tests and x-rays and all this stuff, which doesn't help anything at anywhere. Look where we are with humanity now, the worst state ever in our, with health. <laughs> Kali Yuga, Kali Yuga, you know? <laughs> the greatest darkness. Yeah. Before the dawn. Yeah, that's exactly it. Mm. So it's got to get a little more darker. Yeah. And even there is that doctor in Russia, like he does dry fasting for 40 days in Siberia or where the people come there to that clinic. And he also tells the same thing that dry fasting is the only one way to actually like replenish the dirty water in the mitochondria because the mitochondria works like, um, like it holds ATP, the spirit, yeah. how I understand from my inner standing as much as I explored, it holds ATP, the energy, and it's like a water, like a crystals reflecting like who we are here and if the water is dirty, is not functioning there properly, then there is no spirit in it. And then we just become matter, like disconnected from the source. Like as I understand bits and pieces through my journey, and this is why I think the dry fasting is very powerful because it helps to really replenish that water, to rejuvenate. How? I don't know. So, but I think it does soul. that. It comes through the soul. Yeah. We are, we're putting ourselves in a position where the soul can do its magic. That's it. Yeah, well, you know, again, um, dehydration is only um, at the result of obstruction. And when uh, we remove obstructions, the body becomes hydrated because it's the natural state. It's not supposed to be dehydrated. Um, and so the water would be there because it's just... It's just the way it is. It holds know, on. Like, like because... how, how, how do the planets and everything, you know, it's it's the creator, you know, like it's beyond us, beyond our understanding. Things happen without us having to do anything about it. 
you know, you like know. Uh, the sun still rises and the, everything still happens in the world and without our energy, you know, it's, or no it's heart. already, yeah, or yeah, <clears throat> they don't know how the, it's the, beyond. The, the body has to hold on the, they call it water fluid, because it cannot produce it itself. So it holds on and that's why it goes stagnant and we get sick. When you clear it out through the art of subtraction, we're able to, to get the body to start producing its own hydration again and things flow. It's that simple. So it can purge out all that stagnation. They can call it mitochondria. Yeah, it could be also that. for sure that the body. I keep it simple. The body produces everything. <laughs> I'm, so. I'm done with science. It could be very well <laughs> that the body produces everything on its own. And um, all we have to do is just allow yeah, it. It could be, absolutely does. The soul does it. And we just have to allow it. You know, mm. like uh, everything is just no functioning doubt. on its own. From, and all from, we have to do is just allow it. I have no doubt from all the experiences and... and, and uh, Especially with dry. Yeah, we went through and, and everybody else has gone through. There's just absolutely no doubt in my mind of mm. what, what is happening. The evidence is very, very clear. That the body is able to... To everything, hydrate, regenerate, heal, balance. Yeah, this is so powerful, really, in a way, when you think it's like, mm -hmm. wow. And when I do now very little of my experience and, and very humble experience with dry fasting, I'm like, wow. Sometimes, as you like, you go deeper, you're like, what's in there? What's there more, you know, to be awakened to? One thing we all agree on is that. The most interesting releases on the master fast happen after dries, especially the long, longer dries, like monthly. The most interesting releases happen after the long dries, um, the day, the weekly, the monthly, because uh, yeah, we release deeper stuff. The smell is horrific. Uh, you can see if you do colonics, you will see what comes out of you. It's, it looks very different from the other days. Lots of bile. Um, and yeah, it, it's just, it, it's different. It takes maybe a day or two for it to come out because it has to be flushed again because you squeezed it out. Like you said, let's say the kidneys, you squeezed it out and now it has to kind of open up again um, as it gets your body, you start drinking. Um, and, and, uh, and then it will uh, flush, you know, it will flush whatever it has squeezed. Mm, so even like physically and emotionally, very interesting releases, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the clarity in the head and all that stuff, you know, it's, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, the benefits of uh, fasting in general is beyond words. Um, the clarity in the head, the energy, um, um, focus everything you're the healing of the body you name it it was yeah. like beyond something you've never seen before you know but um again you know do it with balance this is not a um, competition and i find um that you know I find I become humbler when I eat, to be honest with you, and I have uh, fa eating days in my, in my fasting. When I go for longer fasts, I feel like uh, I become kind of, I dissociate, you know, from others and I'm unable to relate as much. And I feel there is an arrogance kind of factor I'm not joking. There is like, I feel like, yeah, I, I, I'm very powerful. I think, and it's very important to be humble with that experience. And I feel food grounds us again, brings mm. us back, humbles us, um, and drinking as well. Mm. So yeah. yeah. I prefer, yeah. you know, just take it easy and find balance. That's what I, in my opinion, um, you don't want to go too long. And then you feel you're disconnected. You feel you're too powerful. I feel this is the ego. I, I feel, you know what, let's, we are on earth. Let's stay on earth and uh, just feel our best while we are here, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. 
we are on a on a nice game to play like lila you know in buddhism they play this game a game called lila a game of life and there is a big board a buddhist like somebody in, in buddhist i don't know some monk created it why well, channeled it he isn't, didn't create it he just channeled it from the divine right and it's a big game and you just play it it's like and it's like a life game it's kind of shows you that the whole life is just a game and i think the more i fast the more i just realize like wow you know i chose this experience you know i chose to eat that's experience i chose to fast that experience you know or oh, to get a big house is experience to let go of everything that i have mm-hmm. and i own and donate is an experience mm-hmm. i don't i don't even see any more anything bad in anything you know it's almost ex- just experience that we choose to go through glass is half full or half empty and it's again duality you know it's like this or that this or that but in the end it's just all one i mean really that like fasting is just like a, a <laughs> expanding my spirituality in a ways i've uh, i've never imagined possible so it's very nice to stay connected with you and you know sometimes agree sometimes disagree but my, it's my, a learning journey yeah, <laughs> yeah well, man, nobody's gonna agree on everything that's impossible <laughs> yeah it's a very it's, nice to do there's eight billion almost eight billion of us and i can guarantee you that there's nothing that eight billions of people uh, agree to <laughs> one thing yeah you know at the end of the day it's all about uh, respecting yeah. each other yeah. um, there is you know there's a negative force there's no question about it and I, I feel it, you know, I feel it uh, with all my love uh, to the Western world. I feel it's coming from the Western world and it's uh, it, um, like there is uh, an oppression kind of um, obsession with like occupying and oppressing other nations, you know, like is it, this is how, you know, I've been seeing it for a long time and I feel, uh, um we will have to find we will have to find peace all together you know because this is um it starts at the individual level strengthening the faith whatever the faith is our connection to the creator and um and once we do that we will be able to be happier with our families because even the family unit, you can see many people have big challenges with their families, unfortunately, today here in the Western society. More than I think world. all around the world, people I've have challenges with their like families. I, I lived in the Middle East, I lived in Italy, I've never seen anything like that. I lived in Lithuania and I lived in other countries and I've seen horrible things happening I, in I families. Have, no, I've never <laughs> seen anything like that where people do not talk to each other. Uh, and they, and it's the normal, like it's very normal. Um, but if somebody is very toxic in family, like it's very like I work with clients, I I work do therapy, and sometimes parents are very very toxic. There are molestation, alcoholism, raping, and and it's of course on a soul level, on a karmic level, most probably those people have done something, and now it's karma back again. Do they have God in their life? Yeah, exactly. That's exa- exactly the question. Where is their faith? Okay, there is lack of faith. Some of people have faith. Some of people don't. But you know, like How can you for have example, faith bad? for example, I know the woman who was like so dysfunctional in her family, and she believed. You know, she went to. It's a long story, but it was so distorted. Her faith in 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 church and. And she believed that the more she suffered, the better person she was, the more her children suffered, the better person they were. And the husband was alcoholic and all was, and she just read Bible to their children every day. And and she didn't really do inner work, you know, and, you know, so there are different stories. And I think there are different families and, you know, sometimes taking a break is is also a, a choice what we need to do and and maybe asking for forgiveness love and some illumination and healing you know that's that's my experience the families can be very toxic um yeah 
<clears throat> at the end of the day, we are, you know, uh, but, uh, but it's generational, you know, like maybe the parents families are broken. I've never seen anything like that before. It is the, the divorce rate. The, it is like so easy to get for people to get divorced. It's normal. Um, the, there's so much in them taught, taught in these in, the, in such cultures that is absolutely wrong. It has nothing to do with peace and balance and correct conduct, um, meaning the creator. Um, and yeah, people can be nice, but I'm sorry, the structure of the whole society is based on wrong, wrong structure. Well, what, what I feel, you know, like, like in a couple, in really in relationship, if it's based on spirituality, but both partners have done their inner work, the inner cleansing that really connect, like really deeply looked at their own childhoods, at their ancestral stuff. And then they support each other on the spiritual path of helping each other grow into the spirit, then I, I believe, you know, it, it, like you say, it's, I believe that spirituality also in my own life in relationship is the core of the relationship. You know, mine is like, yeah. I practice my own spirituality through meditation, through connection to, to the, it has no name, right? But that's, that's the core, I think, of relationship, of having healthy relationship. Yeah, yeah, very, very important. We start with ourselves and then our, like whoever is in our home, and then we go to the rest of the society. That's very important. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, in general, what I'm saying is, it's, and, uh, what I'm saying is uh, the evil force, there is an evil force and it is oppressing so many innocent people in this world. Okay, we, we are not, not, we are living among it, but there are many people who are being oppressed and killed and you know kids and and women and you know elderly and it's just so wrong like if you if this is happening today you know this is normal today and that is but can we really know if it's so wrong can we really really know on a deeper like if it's happening and murdering kids and elders. that's that's so horrible that's that's yeah. that's horrible yeah. on on a level what i see from my eyes it's horrible but if it is happening and if it's you know i am not it is happening reality, my dear my dear i am not changing the reality what god has written is what god has written and this is something we believe in our faith what i'm saying is there is something wrong with the Western society. And people in the West need to start seeing that. If they don't, they really do need to start seeing that. There is something wrong there's... with this society compared to many other countries in the world. This, the Western world has done so much today, more destruction than any other in this world on the planet. And but we, you know, also uh, in Europe, there were so many wars. There were yeah, so many Europe, things. It's a Westernized society too. It's, there is a lot of destruction happening through this kind of civilized nonsense, you know, um, everything. Our education. It all started in Europe. <laughs> our education, our healthcare, our the whole um, Western thing. Everything is corrupt today, our monetary system. But well, in in where I come from in, in Lithuania, everything is corrupted as well. And and you know, a lot of like Soviet Union. Uh, leftovers and things like that horrible things horrible you know hitler and fascism and stalinism and communism and whatever you want but anyways yeah well that's I, westernization too that's westernization too i think that for me where i truly believe it's like this is the kali yuga the darkest time the evil is out there we yeah, see it i agree there is this is a very dark time for all people of faith everybody agrees on that yeah. For everybody, I think everybody, for every human being on this planet, is a very uh, transformational and great times ahead. Yeah, this is what I believe that great well, times are ahead. For the next. Yeah, absolutely. I, I am actually, yeah, you know, because this has been happening for a very long time. This is nothing new for any of us. It's just happening more. And um, so we could see it. So we could really yeah. look at it. You know, yeah, wow. So you can think about, so you can, not, you know, more than just seeing it, you can do something about it 
and uh, look into the solutions that maybe always came to your mind, but you never did yet. You still did not take the solutions. Maybe you can take them now. Yeah, because the Almost thing like is like, a call. Yeah. like a wake up call, I see. You know, how this is how I see it. And I, because, I like yeah. it, but it's stressful a little bit because it's a wake up call. Absolutely. But because you're kind of giving, given a little push. Okay, go ahead. What are you waiting for? You know? I don't think it's a low push. I think it's like a real big slap <laughs> in the face, you know? And it's really, I feel from my own journey and working with people is like, Always, most 99%. If their life is great, no problems, they do nothing. But when the shit hits the fan, they hit the rock bottom, the illness, the divorce, whatever, then there is such big opening for, you know, for awakening, transformation. And, and then they suffer, suffer, suffer until they're like, wow, I don't need to suffer anymore. I'm really you know, I'm really connected. I feel now the, you know, that I'm awakened to my true reality, who I am. So I think that, you know, even though it looks horrible, I think there's a purpose for it and it's coming out. And, you know, 70 years ago, Hitler burned so many Jews. There were no internet. Nobody knew about it, you know, but now this like thing is happening and at least the wars and everything we can he also killed their own people. He didn't um, kill Jews. Yeah. He killed Germans too. Who were not Jews. He killed so many people. Yeah, I mean, there were so many evil people. And, uh, and now we are aware about this. There's internet. We can see the wars, and we can see the truth coming out. If you and see, some people are not awake to this. But how you became awake, how I became awake, that's part of a journey. How does the, you don't force awakening? It happens to you. There's no way you can do things like in my own life. I, I didn't force it anyhow. My soul just organized the creator, organized the awakening in the way it happened. I there is, I didn't do anything about it. Absolutely, you know. It's beyond you. Yeah. So then I kind of look at it. If I was somehow able to awaken that, other people are too. You know, and it wasn't even a choice for me. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be up to God to open people's eyes. Just like you know, up to up to God to open people's eyes. You can only do so much to to help. It's gonna be. It has to come from them through God, you know. And the, I think I think the most, in my opinion, the most important thing a man or a woman can do to be guided is to humbly ask. For guidance ask the creator for guidance yeah because but they need to awaken to a knowledge that there is something they can ask for guidance you know yeah uh, yeah so um yeah. so i guess if you yeah hopefully they will be humble enough to ask for guidance because there is a higher power above them um the creator god it's one it's one power yeah, you, you choose the name, right? You choose whatever yeah, name I mean, anyone um, can choose. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's one creator. And we all agree on that. And um, basically, it is the creator is what's beyond you and it will help you open up. And, and I think when, what happens is when your heart breaks, that's when you're able to transform. Usually when you, yeah, when you hit rock bottom, your heart breaks, then you're able to change. Because you like you feel horrible. You feel like there's no other way, but I have to change. I have to change. I have no other way. Then you open up and you allow the change. And some somehow like you look up and you say, okay, what am I gonna do? You cry, you this, and then it's kind of asking for guidance, you know? It's like letting go, like they say, let go and let the God in. Like really. Yeah. Um, it's, it, yeah, you know, it would be nice for, I think many people, I think are a little bit arrogant to ask for guidance, ask for guidance, bow down to the creator, do what, you know, do what you have to do, just do it. Ask yeah, but some people don't know like that there is something they have not awakened to that reality yet. They just don't know. We like pray, when I we pray for them. And that's it. And From I think us, the best we can do, it's your own transformation, your own healing journey. Yeah, for all we can do for others, um, if you want to help them, is uh, to pray, 
whoever they are, we pray for them because you know you cannot do what God does to them. It is going to be God's will to change them. So for you, all you have to do is just pray that they get the guidance and the help. And it, it, your prayer doesn't always, you know, this is not up to you. This is going to be between God and them. But, but this is what I'm saying, you know, this is what I'm saying that I believe that it's nothing you do. It's like, it's just a process of that is happening beyond our understanding. And it happens at different times to different people. But I think now in these transformational times, it happens more rapidly. And this crisis are pushing great awakening as well in people. But it's just putting all the garbage, all the shit out, you know, so we can. Yeah. Anyways, guys, I really love you. Big, big mm, love you too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wrap it up. It's a full two hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. I have to join more often when yeah. I join. <laughs> so we can have chats regularly. All right. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah. <laughs> thank you i appreciate a lot stay focused let things go if your mind starts going that you need to know just let it go go inwards it'll come to you slowly slowly you will know you'll find it will come that everything works patience <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right christina thank you so much thank you darling all right guys Everybody. and now uh, bye Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.